level marksman here. Uh, hoping you're watching this video because you finally decided to take the plunge in practical shooting, be it IDPA or USPSA. I applaud your decision to become more proficient with your weapons handling, and this is a great avenue to do so. It's a lot of fun. You make a lot of friends. Uh, it's a really great way to spend some time with some good folks, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, you are probably thinking, and I've heard most people that uh, I invite to come out and shoot give me the same answer of, I don't think I'm ready yet, I need to go practice, I don't think I'm ready yet. So a really simple test to know if you are ready yet is to go to the range and put a piece of eight and a half by 11 or a nine inch pipe plate at 10 yards. If you can fire 10 shots and get about eight of them inside that piece of paper or that pipe plate, you're probably squared away enough on your marksmanship fundamentals to do it. So then you can just look at any course of fire as just moving between the different shooting positions and shooting the targets and it'll be fine for you. So that's gonna be the first bit. Uh, finding your local match, who the match director is. If you're a new shooter, there's probably a safety briefing you're gonna to have to show up for. And it's usually gonna be 30 to 45 minutes before whenever the match is supposed to begin. So show up at that time and be there. Uh, you are not allowed to handle the weapons outside of the safe area. And conversely, you're not allowed to handle magazines or ammunition in the safe area. So what you're going to do is, while you're at home, you are going to unload your pistol, put it in a pistol rug, and put it in your range bag. When you get there, put your belt on, put your holsters on. I, I wouldn't even put the magazines into the mag pouches yet. And go find the safe area once your belt's on, put the gun in the holster, and then you can you know, load mags get the mags. Once the gun's in the holster, if it lives in the holster, you don't play with it at all. You can manipulate the gun, do dry draws, whatever, in the safe area, and that's okay. But you cannot do that anywhere else on the range. So if you feel like you need to do a little bit of more dry fire practice, that's where you can do it, is in the safe area. But you may not handle ammunition or magazines. It is a disqualifiable offense, and they will disqualify you for that. So that's, that's universal to both IDPA and USPSA. Uh, the next thing, and these are kind of the foundational rules of the sport, everyone knows the four laws of gun safety. And as long as you follow those, you generally are gonna be okay. Uh, kind of adding one to it, if you're facing downrange at the back firm, that creates a, a 180. And this is, this is generally speaking, IDPA has muzzle safe points and that's different, but we'll just talk about the 180. Uh, if you're squared up downrange, it creates a 180 at your side. The muzzle cannot cross the 180 plane. And for practical pistol, where that's going to come into play is generally as you're moving to your support side. If I go to reload a gun like this, when the workspace, as I'm moving to the left, I've broken the 180 and I get a trip to Dairy Queen and they don't even pay for it. So uh, you're going to have to learn how to reload to your, to your weak side while keeping the gun pointed down range. Um, so learn that in a really easy drill. You can do this without even putting on your belt or your gun is to point at a point on the wall and then just kind of move left, move right, advance and retreat all the time just pointing down range. Once you get used to that uh, and that becomes second nature, you're pretty much squared away on the 180, you'll be good there. The other two times that new guys generally will get disqualified is at load and make ready if you're an IDPA or make ready for USPSA. So there, every bay is going to have a range officer slash safety officer, depending on your sport, I'm just going to use the term RO interchangeably, um, who's going to have a clock, a clock, and uh, then there's going to be another RO who's going to be officiating with the score, calling out the names of the shooters. Generally, it'll be so-and-so's the shooter, other so-and-so's on deck, other so-and-so's in the hole. That's gonna be what they call. So once you hear your name in the hole, just stop pasting and get ready mentally to go and shoot. So do not touch the firearm until you're the shooter and you hear the make ready command. If you're shooting USPSA, it's just make ready. If you're shooting IDPA, it's load and make ready. So very similar there. Um, so at make ready in USPSA, that's your invitation to take the gun out of the holster. You can do dry fire, take some sight pictures on some targets. It's your time. You can take about as much time as you want. Try and keep it to about 15 seconds or less so other shooters don't get anxious. So once the gun is out of the holster, you need to be able to 
Um, lock, a slot, lock the action open, manipulate the gun safely, keeping your finger out of the trigger guard. So once the gun is out, I'll take my uh, dummy round magazines here, I'll seat them, I'll stroke around in the chamber. I have a double action, single action gun, so I'm going to lower the hammer onto a round and reholster. Now, reholstering is important. You cannot point the gun at yourself or anybody else that will disqualify you. So a nice safe way to reholster is, okay, got my mag seated, ready to go, is just draw the gun straight back across your holster, rotate it down and in. That is a very safe way to reholster a gun. Do not lead with the muzzle and go fishing. A lot of uh, guys with a little bit more going on around the midsection will generally kind of, you know, do this. Don't, just kick, so for you guys, just kick your hip out and kind of lean over this way and look. always look into the holster. You don't get bonus points for looking cool as you do no look reholsters. There's no, there's no advantage to doing so. Reholster safely. So once the gun's in the, uh, in the holster, you'll take whatever the start position is. It can be a myriad of things. Uh, just depends what the stage brief is calling for. You'll do that. It'll be fine. And so then once you assume whatever the starting position is, you'll hear the range officer say, are you ready? And then you'll just nod your head, and then it'll say, stand by, and you'll hear this. No, there's a delay on it. There it is. So that's your invitation to engage the course of fire. The clock starts timing at that time. It registers gunfire, so like there, I just slapped it, and that would, and it's got a part-time set, so that was my part-time and dry fire. So it's going to register the sound of gunfire, and it's going to run until your last shot is counted, the last shot is fired. You're not penalized for keeping the gun out and looking at your targets, making sure you shot everything, but the second you shoot again, it's gonna register a new time. So we talked about how to be safe moving around the course of fire. We talked about our awesome drill of pointing down range and learning your, your muzzle discipline. The other thing that's worth mentioning, and this is a snap cap that's chamber, so don't freak out, is as you're moving, if you have to do a good bit of moving to the point where it doesn't make sense to, to run around like this, so you're gonna break your grip so you can do a bit of running, flip the gun in front of your face. It is always good to lead with the gun and practical pistol for two reasons. First, and most important, you're aware of where the muzzle is pointed. So I know exactly what I'm doing yet. In IDPA, there's a lot of doors you have to open. If I'm holding the gun like this, I can open a door without pointing the gun at my hand. If you're kind of holding it down here, there's a good chance if I reach for a doorknob, I'm gonna muzzle myself and I'm gonna disqualify myself. That's not cool. Um, so float the gun in front of your face. The other benefit of floating the gun in front of your face is when you settle into a shooting position, you're almost right there taking sight pictures very fast to get on target, floating it in front of your face. The next big important thing, and you can practice this in the comfort of your own home, is you must keep your finger outside of the trigger guard. So a very simple drill for this is press out, the finger goes in, so if my arms are straight, my finger is bent inside the trigger guard. If my arms are bent, my finger is straight along the slide. So you can just do that. So that every time you're holding a gun, just cognizantly put your finger right there. That's a, a very safe way to hold a gun if you're not doing any shooting. That's what I'd recommend. That kind of rolls into our reload. So let's assume we're reloading. I've got my USPSA production legal belt on here. So if I'm doing a bit of shooting, doing a bit of shooting, doing a bit of shooting, and it's time to reload the gun, so I'm going to drop my mag, see a new magazine, and go. In USPSA, you can do speed reloads, and what that means is there's a round in the chamber, I can just go like that and I'm ready to run. IDPA encourages emergency reloads, so you shoot until slide lock. So, I mean, depending on your firearm and how you choose to do it, whether you're power stroking it, using your support hand to hit the release, or using this hand to hit the release, you're generally going to see the mag and somehow one of those three ways hit the release. So uh, moving to your support side, that's where that becomes the issue. We talked about that with the 180. That's especially important in IDPA where you have to shoot around cover. If I'm shooting to my support side and cover and I'm hard up on the barricade, I'm gonna kinda wanna do this. So do not crowd barricades in IDPA. You want to have arm's length plus a beard is what the first person told me at my first IDPA match. So give yourself a comfortable berth behind the cover and you'll be okay. And if, you've got, if you're okay leaning out from cover, you're okay to reload right there. You don't have to, you know, <clears throat> do the 24 thing and get hard up against it so somebody can 
make a movie about you over here. You, it is a game, and you were just leaning out from cover to shoot. You can reload right here. You don't have to um, turn and get hard up against cover. In fact, it's slow to do so. There's, it's unsafe. You can bang the gun on the barricade. So don't crowd cover. Uh, so when you're done shooting, you're going to be directed to unload your gun by the range officer. So that's going to sound like this for you, SPSA. So I finished my shooting, and then we both know we're done, that I'm done shooting, and you're going to get, if you're finished, unload and show clear. So I'm going to drop my mag, and I'm going to stow it, and I'm going to show you how you rack out the round. You're just going to do that and hold it open like that until the safety officer says, if clear, hammer down and holster. That's my invitation to let the slide go home, pull the trigger, and reholster. So you can see I did my little rocket down and in way to reholster. That is a very safe way to reholster, and that's the way I'd encourage you to do it. Once you get advanced um, and have been doing it for a while, you can do the cute, clever ways to uh, unload and show clear like that. A lot of people really hate that. It's not inherently unsafe. The big danger is you can potentially put your hand in front of the muzzle, but there's already a safety rule there for unload and show clear. So I would encourage you not to do that at your first match. Some safety officers freak out about that. So once the gun's back in the holster, you'll go down range, score the targets. In the next video, we're gonna talk about some of the mechanics of the draw and things like that to kind of square you away on how to do that safely as well. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.